Hey, how are you? So I'm sure you've already seen the news about Ableton Note, the Ableton app for your iPhone. Well, today I wanted to play some of my sessions from Note with found sounds, jam a little bit, and talk about the app and essentially me overthinking everything as I usually do. Also, no, this video ain't sponsored by Ableton or anyone for that matter. Actually, you know what? This video is sponsored by me. I sell hats and shirts that say CU Oscillator and other dumb things down below in case you're interested in uh, getting yourself or someone a little gift. Okay, so I've been having some fun with Note while I basically like wait for friends at restaurants, I'm traveling for work, chilling in the backyard, I don't know, whatever and wherever. Now, I don't use it a ton because I've never been a big fan of uh, iOS apps that want to be a DAW because I just don't like working on my tiny phone for that long, but I do like using my phone for sampling, especially with a little microphone. It can go a super duper long way. This mic here, this is the Shure MV88. It's ugly, it's bulky, but eh, I got a link to it down below in case you're interested. I think it's really good. So with sampling and overall using Note, right, with its limitations, I think this is where Ableton has really nailed something with this app because this app is not where you go to finish a track, it's where you go to start a track. So let's jam a little bit and see where it takes us. And also after the jam, I wanted to share with you some weird thoughts I have about making music and where I think Note is more than just an app to me. All right, so here's the first session I made with Note and uh, yeah, probably a high chance of embarrassment incoming, let's see. Oh, that bass. No, no, no. All right, enough of that one. Let's go to set two. This one was getting a little weird, a little moody. I was waiting uh, for my homie Taylor, who I work with. What's up, Taylor? Um, when I made this one, it was really cold, really moody outside. But my favorite one so far has probably been this one here. And again, these are found sounds. Like I found a lot of these sounds. Of course, there's an 808 in there. And then lastly, there's set three. One thing I really like about these sets is that when you start a new set, it gives you these random sounds to kind of begin with that um, are like random presets. And a lot of them are pretty cool. They are some that I probably wouldn't normally choose, but for the sake of speed, I end up going with them anyway. But the one I wanted to focus on is set four. So this one, if we go and look into here, these are all different sounds like this one was me uh, stepping on a little leaf. I don't know what this was. I was hitting something belly-like, scratching some pots, slapping some wood. Oh, and these are really cool. Listen to that. That's a hummingbird. I uh, have some hummingbird feeders and I love watching them come by. And here's a bunch of them. This one's really cool. Where's it at? Just cool texture, right? So with a lot of these sounds, I ended up making this little beat. You can see I'm not really using a ton of those besides that little found sound, which is actually um, my water bottle that I was hitting. But we can add some more stuff here. Right, I'll add that into the clip. What's cool is I can say, what's this pad's effects or the kit's effects. We have some decay or a uh, reverb. I'll turn this up. I'm gonna send it all the way there. No pre-delay. That's pretty cool. And I'm gonna go listen to this pad and turn it down a little bit. I just want it way in the background. And again, this isn't about getting everything done perfectly here on the spot, right? Because I think that's one of the benefits about Note. Again, I'm here to just kind of get an idea going and get it started, which I really, really enjoy. And if I wanted to, I can go and look at some other things like our filter, attack, our decay for all these different sounds. Like for example, this one here, if I wanted to end a little bit less. There we go, that's a little better, right? Just kind of chilling there. The automation on here is kind of funky. It's, I'm, again, I'm not an expert here, right? <laughs> I just use this stuff for fun. <laughs> I don't know how to delete it once you've recorded it. And you can see that once you start moving something around, 
that little wobble kind of starts popping up in there. And see, look, I just committed that. Dang it. Oh, undo. Thank the Lord. So that's there. But if you add something like this, you're just changing the where you want it to be. And then you have to hit this X, which feels kind of counterintuitive because you're like, all right, well, I put this down. If I hit X, does that mean open it back up? No, that just means don't add that movement to the clip essentially captures kind of always on when it comes to this thing, which is pretty cool because if I were to go back to like, let's say this session here, and I wanted to just sample directly into this and I just wanted to go, let's see, we'll go to um, sampler, done, record a sample. Boom, boom, tap, ba boom, ba boom, tuck a tuck em. Right, so we have, <laughs> Boom, boom, tap, boom, 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 tap, boom, 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 tap, boom, 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 tap. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna hit X. So capture is essentially always on. So watch this. Boom, boom, tap, boom, 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 tuck a tuck. Boom, boom, tap, boom, 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 tuck a tuck. Boom, boom, tap, boom, 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 tuck a tuck. Boom, boom, tap, tuck a tuck. Boom, boom. The the sick thing about having capture is that as I'm playing notes in, it's going to auto detect how I was playing those notes. And this is another thing I really like about note. I hope I'm saying this all right. I'm speaking so fast, I feel like. Because capture is kind of on, I can play in a beat at whatever BPM I am currently feeling. And I think that that's cool because I can make stuff really slow or really fast and I wouldn't normally set that up when I go to set my BPM when I'm using Ableton Live. Here, I'm just kind of quickly just jam into whatever I feel like doing. I'm just creating. I think that's the best part about this. But here, let's go back and we'll say, uh, what was that, set four? Did I add that to set four? Dude, I totally did on accident. All right, let's go ahead and... Uh, Back to our sample, turn it down. Again, just kind of chilling in the background. And then if I really wanted, we can go to this, whatever. Whoa, something is tripping on this. Can I not hit? Yo, I don't know what's going on with this one. What? Is there some weird Bluetooth thing going on? Am I doing something trippy? No, Bluetooth is off. Okay. Oh, well, we maybe we'll just not use that. Let's see what uh, this has to offer here. Okay, cool. That's kind of cool. I mean, forget I said that. It's not that cool. Okay, so I'm starting to push note a little further than where I normally take it. Again, I mainly just use this to find rhythms, right, and create just these little found sound kind of loops. Right, let me go ahead and take this one out. Something like this is enough for me to kind of keep it going. And where I find a lot of power in note is just being able to go into my drum rack and record sounds directly into those cells and keep it really simple and really straightforward. So when I realized note is where ideas begin and you don't need to be so serious in finishing a track on just the app itself, it removed a ton of pressure that keeps me from making music at times, thinking, oh, I wanna make some music, but then you know, I need to do this and then turn that thing on, and then I need to make sure I finish it, and if it's just an idea, how do I get it from one device over to the DAW to finish it later on, and like, you know, the list goes on and on. Of course, this is all self-inflicted, but I've spoken about this before in the video where I was sampling some nature sounds on a hike. I like going out and sampling sounds when I wanna be creative, but not really commit to anything super serious, like a super serious track. But when I do wanna make some music, I have some sounds recorded that I can pull from, but it, 
it was still a bit of work, right? So how I used to get sounds over from my phone into Ableton Live is I would sample them into voice memo on my phone, which would auto sync with iCloud to my laptop. So then I would open up my laptop, drag and drop those sounds into a drum rack and start editing and creating the beat there. But that's where things got kind of boring because I would usually end up you know, editing and programming using my trackpad or a mouse, which to me is honestly kind of an uninspiring. But now with Note, I don't have to do any of that on my laptop. I can sample straight into the drum rack cell or straight into a sampler within Note on my phone and edit it on the screen and it will save all that info into a session and then sync it over to Ableton Live using its cloud service. So I can then just finish it later whenever I want to. And for whatever reason, this reminds me a ton of this idea that really stuck with me from the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. I know, random finance book for music ideas. I guess I'm just always thinking about music. Anyway, it's this 85% solution. Essentially, 85% of the way there is a whole lot more than zero and getting something done is rewarding. Plus, getting started is more important than becoming an expert or perfecting things on the first round. So with Note, it feels like it's removing a few of those um, barriers to the creative process for me, which helps me get closer to that 85% point, which makes me want to continue and possibly finish the song. The hardest part about almost anything is starting, right? The first block of a run, getting onto your yoga mat, opening that book you ordered two months ago. It's all a drag at first, but I have yet to regret it afterwards. And so far I haven't had any regrets with the tracks that I've made on Note. And to be frank, since we're here, sometimes being in a big studio or a main studio is a bit intimidating. It's why I use this tiny ass laptop now because it feels a little less serious and more exploratory, more fun, I guess, you know, like, let your hair down, unbutton that top button, take your shoes off, just kind of chill, right? And even with all this gear, it feels like, okay, I have this major equipment. I better know how to use it, right? You paid a lot of money for this. Whatever you make now better sound incredible. And sometimes facing the reality of sitting down and making music and having it not be as incredible as I'd hoped for is harder to do than to just think about how cool the music might be if I were using this stuff, right? The fantasy of the awesome sounds that this gear can make. Like the music I didn't make sounds better in my head than the music I do make. Well, sometimes. And that's where I think exploring and trying weird creative things can surprise us. So go sample some stuff, voice memo or note, it doesn't matter, just go do something. Okay. This conversation's getting a little heady, so let's go ahead and call it here. Hope to see you again next week. Much love, my friend, and you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Where we at? Yeah, I could take this and throw some chords on this, right? Is this working?